Yeah. Five meters per second as expected. UHF is good. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. On August 5th, NASA's Curiosity rover set down successfully in Gale Crater just off the Martian equator. And the men and women of Pasadena's Jet Propulsion Laboratory could not be more delighted. With all systems apparently go, we caught up with the project scientist for the Mars Science Laboratory project, Dr. John Grotzinger, for an update and information about their first target of investigation. Uh, everything's going nominally, which means it's going really well. Mostly what's happening now is that we continue to do instrument checkouts, uh, engineering checkouts, and the science team has been spending a lot of time trying to figure out what we want to do for our, our first major science target, which is about uh, four to 500 meters away to the east, and there's bedrock exposed there, layered bedrock, and it looks like maybe, you know, it's possible it might have something to do with the alluvial fan that we see uh, from orbit, and, and we wonder if, these, if this rock might not have something to do with water. So, you know, that's a real attractive target, except for it's in the opposite direction of the path we want to take to Mount Sharp. So you have to weigh the time against that it takes to drive to this target and then do all the science there, pack it up, come back down to where we started, where we landed, and then go to Mount Sharp. The reason we picked this site is because we see evidence in the form of what's called an alluvial fan, which is a big old pile of debris that was eroded from the mountains in, in the rim of Gale Crater. And so we know that water was flowing, and it was flowing in the direction in which we landed, which is kind of the low point. It's sort of the valley between the rim of the crater and Mount Sharp. And we're right in the middle there, right in the low point. So if water flows downhill, we kind of think we're in a good place. And so if we go to this, to this rocky outcrop, we might find that we need to drill it. So the reason we, we put the drill on the, on the rover to begin with was that we might find a rocky material that might have had an origin in water and, and we might need to drill into it to get the evidence that we need. Before we, we get the drill out, we're gonna try to scoop a sample. So what we need there is a, a pile of sedimentary material Maybe it's sand blown by the wind that, that, that forms maybe a little, little mini sand dune or something like that that's out there on the plains. But it, by getting the, the scoop before the drill, that gives us confidence that we can then move to the more complicated step of actually drilling. But the journey to Mount Sharp will be a long one. A lot of people ask, you know, how long is it going to take us to, to achieve all these different waypoints of geological interest? and eventually winding up at Mount Sharp, how long will that take? It kind of depends. It is a mission of exploration, and we do set out a plan in advance. And, uh, you know, people often hear the expression that planning is everything and plans are useless. And so, you know, if we find something really exciting, we're just going to throw our plans away and, and replan. And so, basically, as we go around and, and, and make discoveries, we'll look at our plan and decide if it needs to be changed. But right now, we're kind of hoping that we'll get to our first major rock outcrop to study in, in a month or two and, and be able to really study it in detail, including uh, drilling and using the SAM and Chemin instruments. And then after that, you know, hit the road. Give the keys back to the engineers. They gave them to us to go do some science for a while. We hand them back to the guys that actually drive the rover and get us there, you know, as quickly as possible, maybe stopping along the way to do some science. And I would guess if we followed that plan, it would probably be about, probably be about a year, uh, you know, nine months to a year to get there. The mission of Curiosity has already been a resounding success. But much lies ahead, including the prospecting of the environs of Gale Crater and the central mountain, Mount Sharp. Many discoveries await Curiosity and the science team. As scientists, we, we, we talk with each other about what, what to us would be a defining moment for the mission where, you know, beyond the thrill of, of landing safely on the surface of Mars and giving us a rover with 100% capability, you know, what would define the, the, the scientific excitement? And I think for us, it is being able, first and foremost, to confirm the things that we saw from orbit because science is about having a hypothesis and we have hypotheses from orbit that there are certain features on the ground that are associated with water, evidence of water. We would like to confirm that. And I think if we're able to do that, we'll be very excited about that. That'd be a terrific, thrilling moment. Then, of course, we'd like to go beyond that and, and see that the way that, the, that all the different lines of evidence that come from the different instruments build together to give us a coherent 
uh, understanding of what the surface of Mars looked like at this particular place over three billion years ago. And so it's kind of like thinking of the rover as a time machine. It, it gets us to a point where we're able to think about what the planet was like billions of years ago in a lot of detail that we've never had before. Reconstructing the early environmental history of Mars, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Curiosity is just over two weeks into a mission that could last for many, many years. As the rover prepares for its first drive across the expanse of Gale Crater, John Grotzinger and his team are prepared to probe the many secrets that surely await them. This is Rod Pyle for Space.com. Space.com.